call to order the James City County Wetlands Board. The responsibility of this board is to carry out locally the Commonwealth policy to preserve the wetlands and to accommodate economic activities so as to prevent the spoliation. Uh, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Roadley? Yes. And Mr. Waltrip is absent. Mr. Gussman? Here. Mr. Hughes? Here. Mr. Apperson? Here. Uh, have you all had a chance to look at the minutes from last month? Yep. Any problems? Nope. Okay, the minute stand is prepared. We have a public hearing. WJPA 190036. Mr. Wilson? <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Going to try a little different uh, presentation style tonight, so please bear with me. I'm going to go through the presentation and the memo at the same time. I apologize in advance if I get lost. <laughs> I'm Mike Wilson, Senior Watershed Planner, here to present case WJPA 19-0036, Mr. Bruce Christman at 105 Shellbank Drive. They are proposing, he is proposing a uh, revetment, uh, 155 linear foot revetment and associated bank grading. The Chesapeake Bay Board, which meets immediately after this board, will uh, look at the bank grading portion of this project at that point in time. He's also proposing a 100 foot long pier, which is outside this uh, board's jurisdiction, but I just wanted to make the board aware of that as well. Uh, project located in the Shell Bank subdivision, First Colony, off of uh, John Tyler Highway and or Green Springs Road. Lake Pasbahe is here. James River is here. Uh, new for this month, I have started to include the um, county watershed drainage divides. Um, this magenta line here, that is the uh, James River direct discharge watershed for the county. Gordon Creek up here to the uh, north, uh, northwest and Powhatan Creek to the south of uh, the project location. The 2019 aerial photograph of this project site, um, we'll notice that uh, on 107 Shell Bank and 103 Shell Bank, uh, there are existing stone revetments. There is an existing failed wooden bulkhead in this location. You can see waters behind the bulkhead. This is a actively eroding uh, bank, vertical in nature, 20 to 25 feet uh, in height. What we can also see here are uh, a lot of uh, very mature oak trees, 20, 24 to 36 inch diameter, um, very near the top of the bank, and um, a little this one's not so clear, but there's also some uh, uh, piles and dead men from the failed bulkhead that are in this location here. <clears throat> from 2011, the aerial map for 2011, we can see the, again, the stone breakwater, or sorry, the stone revetments on either of the adjacent properties. The failed bulkhead in this location again. Um, it's hard to tell if the bank is eroded more or less in this picture or not, but it's still uh, severely eroded and, and the bulkhead clearly is showing that it's failed uh, in 2011. Also in 2011, you can see an existing house up here that was not there in the 2019 photograph. Uh, the owner at the, of the property at the time before the Crispins bought the property uh, had the house demolished. Um, so that's why it doesn't show up in the 2019 uh, photo. 1996 aerial photograph, it's a little bit hard to see, but the bulkhead again is in this location. It appears to staff that there's still water behind the bulkhead, that it has failed in, uh, prior to 1996. You also notice on both adjacent properties, neither one of them have a revetment in place. Um, topography of the project site, this topography doesn't do it justice. This bank is vertical. 
um, but the computer just doesn't allow uh, topo lines to be drawn um, in a vertical nature. So, um, again, it's the toe of the bank is approximately 20 to maybe 25 feet in a couple places from the failed bulkhead here. So this distance to this distance is approximately 20 feet, maybe 25 in some areas. <clears throat> Oops. FEMA thud plane. Um, this is on the James River. There's a uh, very long uh, fetch to this project. And when FEMA redid the floodplains in 2015, this property and, and the ones adjacent to it are uh, what's now considered the VE zone, which means that there's wave action associated with flooding. Um, and that elevation is elevation 16 uh, that the waves potentially could impact, uh, which makes sense given the nature of, of the way that bank looks. From the, um, from the permit application that Ms. Havens supplied, the, the failed bulkhead is in this location. Proposed revetment is approximately three feet landward of the failed bulkhead. There are PVC pipes in place in the field to mark the toe of that revetment. <clears throat> and in cross section, you can see the revetment here, the failed bulkhead here, and PVC pipe here. And then she also, um, because these PVC pipes at the toe of the revetment will be disturbed during construction, she offset one's five foot seaward of where the toe is to be located for um, ease of construction in the future. You can also see from the uh, cross section that this part, and I'll get to this in the, the uh, Chesapeake Bay portion, this portion of the bank is to be cut. This portion behind the revetment is to be filled. <clears throat> uh, proposed house that the Crispins are working on, as I said earlier, the, the house that showed up in 2011 is no longer existing and the, the property is uh, vacant. Uh, the proposed pier that we mentioned earlier will be here. Site photographs. Failed bulkhead. Uh, it was proposed to be flush cut and removed with the construction of the revetment. Uh, the deadman, pi uh, the piles and the deadman, all that, uh, all those dilapidated structures will be removed. Um, there's something I didn't mention earlier, but there's something approximately where the toe of the revetment's gonna be, and it looked to be a really historic bulkhead. Um, not sure what's going on there, but that's, that's this in this location. This area is intertidal. Uh, the intertidal area between mean low and mean high, and it is to be filled. Different uh, perspective. Again, the existing bulkhead, which is being proposed to be flush cut and removed. The existing deadman piles to be removed. Again, looks to be an historic bulkhead. Um, and this, then this one was put in later after this one failed. And then the intertidal area. Here's, a low, here's one of the PVC pipes that we discussed, basically at the first, if you want to call it that, the first bulkhead that's failed. And then there'll be a corresponding one uh, seaward of the uh, primary failed bulkhead. <clears throat> the slope, approximate mean high water, is somewhere in this area. The intertidal area, again, to be filled, the 20 to 25 foot tall bluff. You can see these large oak trees at the top of the, very near the top of the bluff. Again, existing bulkhead to be removed, 
Dudman piles. There are pockets, not a lot, approximately, st staff approximated maybe 20 square feet of Peltandra that would be, would be impacted and the intertidal area and PVC pipe locations. From the top of the bank, failed bulkhead, the Deadman, the intertidal area, PVC pipe locating, marking the total revetment. And then again, you can see it, that toe is gonna follow for the most part, the old original failed bulkhead. Um, so, staff did meet with the agent, Ms. Carla Havens, uh, the contractor who's proposed to do this work, and several other contractors to discuss other options besides um, uh, the revetment as proposed. We talked about spurs off of one or both of the adjacent revetments. We talked about uh, breakwater out in the James. We talked about offshore sill, um, all the associated beach nourishment that would go along with that. Um, and um, Christmas uh, wanted to go with this proposal. Um, Because of the vegetated wetland loss of approximately 20 square feet, uh, staff's requiring a $500 surety so they could buy uh, wetland credit from an approved title wetland bank. Uh, once they provide uh, written proof that that's been accomplished, that surety would be returned. Um, as you are aware that the Commonwealth uh, is committed to no net loss of wetland vegetated wetlands, um, and it, uh, in order for this project to be authorized to impact wetlands, whether they're vegetated or, or unvegetated, and then compensate for the vegetated wetland loss in the, some prescribed manner, the following three criteria must be met according to uh, the code. All reasonable mitigative efforts, including alternative siting, which would eliminate or minimize the wetland loss or disturbance must be incorporated into the proposal. And the proposal must be clearly water dependent in nature and it must demonstrate clearly its need to be in the wetlands or overwhelming and its overwhelming public and private benefits. Um, if the project cannot meet one or more of those criteria, the project must be denied or occur in the areas outside of wetlands should it satisfy all those criteria, then compensation for the vegetative wetland loss is required. Um, and then um, should the board choose to approve uh, the wetland permit, staff does suggest uh, these conditions that uh, the applicant obtain any other necessary federal, state, local permits that are required for the project that assured an amount of $500 to guarantee the no net loss wetland policy as outlined in the state code. Uh, that surety should be in the form acceptable to the county attorney's office. That any development activities located in the special flood hazard area shall comply with the zoning ordinance, floodplain area regulations, and, re and receive the required approval and permits prior to those activities that applies primarily to the pier which is outside this board's jurisdiction but wanted to make it a condition just in case uh, something else uh, gets in the way with FEMA regulations and then the um, wetlands permit shall expire September 11th 2020 one year from tonight and then if an extension of the permit is needed, that written request be submitted to our office six weeks in advance, which is July 31st, 2020. Staff would be happy to answer any questions the board may have on this uh, proposal. Any questions? Um, this is probably going to be a question for the applicant, but um, um, 
Is there a reason why we're not looking at, you know, some kind of living shoreline or, you know, why we're going with revetment? I guess I've gotten spoiled. You know, we've done so many living shorelines and we've actually seen the results. They seem to be working really well. I'll defer that to the okay. other. Okay. Is the uh, bank failing? I see the uh, oak trees. Are they look like, do they look like they're beginning to go? Um, those oak, there's no, no guarantees, but I've, those oak trees have been there um, in the current proximity to the top of bank for the last five years at least uh, that I've been aware of it. Uh, the bank is actively eroding. If, if um, for instance, if we'd have got that hurricane last weekend, uh, like they predict, predicted at one point, um, one of those or more of those trees might have come down. Um, it's fairly, un fairly uh, unstable at the very top of that bank. Other questions? Um, yeah. Your, the photograph here, what, what, what tide was this taken on? Was this an extremely low tide or? Um, this was near an average low tide. Uh, we were out there with Ms. Havens at this time. This was taken uh, and, and we wanted to be out there at low tide so mm -hmm. we could determine the, uh, the toe of the revetment, make sure it was outside of the MRC jurisdiction, things of that nature. And, uh, was it an, uh, was it a really low tide? No, I don't think it was. Thank you, sir. We'll open to public hearing. Would anybody care to uh, speak on this matter? Come and identify yourself. We'd appreciate it. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Thank you, Mike. I'm Carla Havens, Mid Atlantic Resource Consulting, 1095 Cherry Row Lane, Plainview, 23156. As Mike said, he's met out on this site with a number of contractors, I think five. And yeah, it, the, there have been multiple ideas thrown out on how to stabilize this bank. It's like the last parcel along that whole stretch that hasn't been, well, it, it was addressed twice with a bulkhead and it didn't work both times. So the APOs to the right and to the left put in revetments, or the previous property owners put in revetments, and nothing happened on this parcel, and it just continues to erode away. And as you see from that photo taken from top of the, the bank, it's, it's basically a 25-foot step down. And if you've been there, you don't want to get close to the edge. It's, it, it continues to... Uh, to slough off in, in huge chunks. Um, a living shoreline was considered in a number of varying designs. And the water on the channelward side of the channelward most bulkhead is um, at least minus two. I was out there in it. And the volume of rock that you need for a living shoreline when you drop down two feet as opposed to being on the great or, or on the intertidal area. I mean, it just, it, it doubles if not triples. So the, the, the cost to do something like that, and I don't want to give names of contractors, but um, the, the, the estimates were outrageous. <coughs> Tri triple, triple what a revetment would be. So basically um, what's proposed is, is not even to connect the two dots of the APO revetments. We're going landward about 8 to 10 feet um, on each side and connecting the dots back there. So it's, it's, it's not as, as encroachment, it, it's not encroaching as far as it, it could. Um, we're trying to hold it back. And then that bank cut on a 3 to 1, it, it, it kind of works out really nicely that that cut is pretty much what we need for the fill portion out in front. So that's what's in front of you. Do you have any questions? Um, um, can you pull it back a little bit further? Why can't it be pulled back further? It's still quite a gap from, um, you know, from, from the, uh, the, the toe now 
out, out there. You're, you're doing a lot of filling there. Well, the further we pull the, the revetment inland, yeah. the more offset you have from the adjacent revetments. So you're going to have like right angles, or you're, you're going to have to somehow connect into the adjacent revetments. Looking at the diagram, it's up uh, now. It uh, appears at the property. Uh, there's a space between the neighbor on the um, east side and the property line that's not um, hardened. I'm reading this wrong. Oh. Well, I think James City County is notorious for having an offset in their property lines, the, the light blue. I, I could be wrong. It, it, it's not lining up, but I thought you and Middlesex both had offset problems. But the, basically up to each, on, on Mr. Crispin's property, if you're standing on it looking at the river, there's a revetment on the right that comes up to his property line. There's a revetment on the left that comes up to his property line. We met with Mike to see if we could connect the, the channel where dots. He said, no, let's pull it back. So we pulled it back with still being able to maintain a three to one slope. They would like it to be walkable. Um, and, and we can get into what's gonna be planted on that when you put on your next hat, your CBPA hat. Um, we just felt this was a really, a really friendly way to solve a, an, a problem that has been going on for a long time. Other questions? Thank you. Would anybody else care to speak on this? Uh, we'll close the public hearing and go. Well, you can, well, you're welcome to come up and identify yourself and we'll talk to you. Once we close the public hearing, then there'll be no more talking. Come, we'd like for you to identify yourself. Okay, please come up and identify yourself and we'd like to hear your comments. Excuse me, Mr. Uh, Chair. Could you reopen the public hearing, please? Okay, uh, we'll reopen the public hearing and uh, receive your comments. Okay, I'm Carrie Traver. I'm the adjacent property owner of the 103 Shell Bank. And uh, there are about five oak trees, and one oak tree is in my property, and I would very much like to keep that oak tree. So I'm all for the revetment, and I'm all for the plan that's been laid out. I'm just, I just want it on the record that I'm hoping that everything can be graded in such a way that there is care to keep the tree that's in my yard that's a little bit further back from the other oak trees. Just the one that we can see on the um, photograph on the right-hand side, to the outside. That one. How does the property f flow on your, do you have a three-to-one drop, or um, where is the tree? Or do you have a cliff there? What, what do we have? No, I mean, we can't walk down it, so I, I don't know what the measurement is. We, we have steps on the, we own the other property on the other side of the red line as well, and then we have steps that allow us to get down to a dock. So we never walk down that. We wouldn't walk down it. It's, yeah. <laughs> Has the erosion started to encroach on your property? No. Not yet. Your concern is maintaining uh, the integrity of, the, of your tree on your property? Right. Okay. Thank you. Do we have anybody else that would like to speak? If not, we'll close the public hearing and go to discussion. I really always like to hear your comments. <laughs> Well, I mean, Carla has addressed the part of the consideration for a living shoreline and the ample cost associated with that structure. Um, and it is environmentally preferable, um, but I can appreciate that the, uh, the cost is significant. Being able to balance a cut and fill on site um, helps with the import of additional material from a cost standpoint. Um, it's pretty obvious they have a severe erosion problem. So I'm, I'm not opposed to the revetment, um, given the cost structure of, of a uh, breakwater in this, uh, in this environment. But, um, you know, if you pull the, the, the living shoreline back closer to the, to the uh, uplands, um, you might reduce some of the rock cost, but then you also have grading cost associated with getting that slope to a stable you know, two and a half or three to one slope. Um, so it's, there's a trade-off back and forth. 
I'm inclined to support the application um, given the nature of the property and the volume of material that would have to be moved. Mr. Gusman? Um, sort of wondering, you know, if it could be pulled back more, but it's going to be, um, we're filling in a, an awful lot of the inner title here. But, um, you know, I can see the problems with doing that. I don't know. <laughs> you don't want too great an offset. And I can see that <laughs> the more it's pulled back and the, the, with the grading, it's going to affect the neighbor's property more. So I don't, you know, I don't want to cause problems for the neighbors too by insisting on that. Carla, if you could ask, answer the question, how far back from the existing top of bank do you expect the grading to extend? I think it was about 70 feet. It shows on uh, oh, one of my drawings. And, and just, just to clarify, even if we do a living shoreline, you're still going to have to grade the bank. Yeah, I it's, you, we're not getting, I mean, that's just the nature of the beast. It's just this is one of the last properties out there that hasn't had the bank graded. If you look on sheet two of four, from the bulkhead, the channel word most bulkhead, back to the top of the proposed top of bank, and if you went to the site, you saw that there were pink wire flags out in the yard, and I reflect them on my drawings. Um, at 70 feet, approximately 70 feet. You've got the revetment coming up and then the slope cut, tying into the top of the revetment and, and continuing into the upland. Um. Um. What, what, what measures are you going to take um, to, you know, to protect the river while, while, while you're doing the fill? Um, I've spoken with um, Joe Buchheit, who's the ENS guy for James City County, and I'm gonna, we're going to put a silt fence at the top of the proposed revetment, a silt fence at the very top of the new bank cut, and then another silt fence midway where there's going to be, hopefully, a sloped access ramp from um, from one side over down on a gentle slope to the uh, to the pier, and then we've got a um, a mix of the Virginia panicum, which we used in um, Uncle's Neck. That Mike and Trevor were both really pleased with the the um, the results from that. It's a deep root of native, and then I've contacted uh, <coughs> Pinelands Nursery. I don't know if you're familiar with them. They, they do a lot of wetland restoration. And they have two mixes. Uh, and I sent the inf information to, um, to Mike and I think to Joe, too. And uh, the two mixes that we're considering, one is called a steep slope stabilization mix. And the other is a erosion control mix. And Pinelands, I, I described the, the nature of the site to the nursery, and they said that either one would, would be an excellent selection for stabilizing that bank. It's deep-rooted natives and um, can handle lots of sun and crummy soil and not a whole lot of water. Jefferson, do you have any questions? I, I went out and looked at this with, uh, with Mike, and uh, I shared... Uh, Mr. Gussman's field in the river bottom. It looks to me like this has been pulled back uh, more than I think you explained to me out there, if, if I'm reading it right. And I, I like like the fact that it's been brought back, back inland. Uh, I think it's a reasonable fix for what you, the situation you've got, especially since it's been hardened on both sides. And uh, something's going to have to be done there. It's, it's, it's uh, to see it. It's a straight drop off and the trees are just, just borrowed time. It has to be fixed. I like the fact that uh, the staff has pulled back the revetment much more so than I think I saw when I was out there. You correct me if I'm wrong, 
But I think you pulled it back some more, which, which I, I like a lot. I think it's reasonable the way it is, and I will support it. Yeah, I have one, and the public hearing is uh, over, but uh, is there going to be any problem with the tree next door? <coughs> Do you think there'll be a problem with the tree next door uh, maintaining the tree? Um, everybody is aware that that tree is, I, I think the outlook is to try to preserve that tree to the greatest extent possible. Um, it's, it's not on the edge. It's somewhat set back. Part of what is going to make or break whether that tree lives is the extent of its, of its roots. And as you know, the feeder roots extend out as far as the canopy of the tree. So to limit the disturbance under the canopy and any cutting of the bank under the canopy um, will be addressed. And hopefully we can just sculpt it um, and do minimal impacts to the tree. Thank you. We did look at that tree, and it, it's a cherry bark oak, David, which is, which is rare for that site. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it could be a long-lived plant if it's taken care of. It has some life, you know, a couple hundred years left in a you know, normal lifespan if it's taken care of. Okay. Any other discussion? Do we have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move to adopt the resolution to grant the permit for Wetlands Board Case WJPA 19-0036. Hey, can we have a, a roll call uh, vote, please? Mr. Rodley? Yes. Mr. Gussman? Yes. Mr. Hughes? Yes. Mr. Apperson? Yes. Okay, you have your permit. Uh, we have board considerations none. Do we have matters of special privilege? I see none. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Sir. We are adjourned. Okay. I'd like to um, call to order the September 11th meeting of the James City County Chesapeake Bay Board. The responsibility of this board is to carry out locally the Commonwealth policy to protect against and minimize pollution and deposition of sediment in wetlands, streams, and lakes in James City County, which are tributaries of the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, may we have a roll call, please? Mr. Rodley? Here. Mr. Walter is absent. Mr. Gusman? Here. Mr. Hughes? Here. Mr. Apperson? Here. First order business are the minutes. Are there any corrections, the additions, deletions to the minutes? Oh, the minutes stand approved. Our next order of business are public hearings, and we will proceed with CBPA 19 0088. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Mike Wilson, Senior Watershed Planner, here to present case CBPA 19 0088 105 Shellbank Drive, Mr. Uh, Bruce Christman. Uh, this is the companion case to the wetlands case that was uh, permit that was just approved. Um, uh, again, the Chesapeake Bay Board is um, we're going to be uh, looking at the bank grading and tree removal. Uh, for this property. Again, Lake Pasbahe and then James River. It's within the James River watershed. Uh, should look familiar. Uh, the grading as described in the in the wetlands case, uh, uh, existing topo, that's a vertical bluff, uh, 20 to 25 foot. The floodplain again, elevation 16, it is a VE zone, which means it has wave action. From the application, um, these red X's are uh, trees to be, uh, they're either already gone or they're being proposed to be removed um, with the bank grading or in the case of the trees here with the, uh, with the house. The tree in question for uh, the neighbor uh, is, is off the page to the left here. And we do have a photograph of that. I will point that out to you when I get to it. Again, from the wetlands application, the cross section, revetment here, the old failed bulkhead, uh, this area to be filled, this area to be cut, generally a three to one slope from the top of the revetment towards the house. <clears throat> uh, there is a proposed, instead of putting steps in to reach the pier, the applicant is proposing uh, a sloped ramp. At, at, um, don't know exactly what that slope would be, but it would be in this area from the pier location 
to the, the southeast uh, adjacent uh, property here. The rest of this bank would be relatively or a lot steeper. They could walk down this uh, fairly easy. Also shown on this plan is the three silt fence locations that Ms. Havens explained in the wetlands uh, project. Silt fence here at the top of the revetment. Uh, the silt fence here at the landward side of the access ramp and then one at the top of the uh, graded area. And the proposed revetment. Uh, future house, uh, those plans to my knowledge have not been submitted yet to the county. Um, and so the proposed grading would be here at the silt fence. Trees to be removed. From the uh, proximate location of uh, the middle of the house, perhaps, these trees are all very close within 10 feet or 15 feet of the bank. Those would all be removed with the bank grading. They're located generally in this area. Um, Going closer to the river, looking over towards the Travers property over here, the tree in question, and um, she may correct me if I'm wrong uh, once the public hearing is open, but I believe the tree in question for her was this oak tree here. Shows up here. And that is a close, I know that's the tree. Um, and as Mr. Apperson stated during the uh, wetlands case, we had a, a very good discussion on, on how to keep that tree alive, uh, which I'm hoping he will be willing to share with the rest of the board. I can't, um, can't quite remember what we said other than they're doing a decent job of it, but needed to get rid of uh, uh, the turf grass, I think, within the drip line. Uh, but he may correct me also if I've gotten that wrong. Um, again, from very close to the top of the bank, you've seen this picture uh, from the wetlands case. This is one of those trees that showed up in the first photograph within five, five or ten feet of the top of the bank to be, it will be removed uh, if the bank's graded. So, The staff has evaluated the, um, the application, and according to the ordinance, section 237, the application has to meet five conditions in order for the board to approve. And uh, I'll just go through those real quick. That one, the exception request is the minimum necessary to afford relief. And the grant any exception will not confer upon the applicant any special privileges denied by the ordinance to any other property owner similar, similarly situated in the vicinity. An exception request will be in harmony with the purpose and intent of the chapter and is not of su substantial detriment to water quality. That the exception request is not based upon conditions or circumstances that are self-created or self-imposed and does not re and their Request does not arise from conditions or circumstances either permitted or not non-conforming that are related to not adjacent parcels. Net reasonable and appropriate conditions are imposed which will be prevent the exception request from causing a degradation of water quality. And to that end, should the board approve this application, the staff recommends uh, the following conditions that the applicant obtain any other necessary federal, state, or local permits as required for the project that will include James City County Erosion Sediment Control Plan approval and a land disturbing permit due to the extensive nature of the grading operation. Uh, the exception request approval shall become null and void if construction has not begun within one year from tonight, September 11th, 2020, and then any written request for an extension to the exception shall be submitted the Stormwater Resource Protection Division no later than six weeks prior to that expiration, which is July 31st, 2020. Be happy to answer any questions the board may have regarding this application. Okay, um, that access ramp, is, is that, um, 
Is the access ramp uh, permanent, or permanent, or is that just for the construction? It'll it'll be used for construction certainly, but it is intended to be permanent. And um, can, can you describe that? Sure. It'll just be a it'll be a less it'll be like a switchback in the mountains. It's a way to get down the slope. You you go down uh, more. Uh, but it's not paved or anything. It won't be paved. No, it's going to be grassed or or vegetated, I should say, okay. uh, with the slope stabilization mixes they're proposing. Um, and that, that um, Ms. Havens did bring it up in the wetlands case, but they are proposing uh, uh, switchgrass and, um, and a seed, uh, wildlife seed mix native uh, to the area or to steep slopes that um, there will be no turf grass, no, no constant maintenance of that slope. Regarding the ramp, uh, the hill is going to be a uh, three to one. It'll is be, the ramp going to be three to one also as you walk down it? No, this will this will be more ten to one, fifteen to one. It'll, just, it'll be a it'll be a shallower slope. That's going to be cut into three to one slope. Yes, it'll be it'll be steeper. I w I should have when we were out there. The neighbor has the exact same thing on their property. I should have gotten a picture of that. It shows it. Uh, it's a great example of, of what they're trying to do. Um, maybe it'll show up in the aerial photograph. Um, you can kind of see it here. It starts up here and comes this way. And then it, they, have, they actually have a diverging path to get to their pier. Um, but the main cut is this way. And then this is, is cut into that three to one slope. At a, at a shallower gradient. It's, it's completely grassed. Um, no I don't steps. I have to worry or, that that's going to intercept the flow, like in a heavy storm, that's going to intercept the flow with the storm water coming down the bank and it's going to channel it all and, you know, and erode away. That's only a concern until the slope stabilized. Um, so while it's under active construction and, and still under uh, Sediment, erosion sediment control bond, um, will that be a concern? Once the slope is stabilized and, and, and all the turf is, or not turf, but the, the seed mixes have come up, uh, it'll, it won't be an issue anymore. It will, in effect, channel it, but it'll be stable. Any other questions for staff? Uh, at this time, I'd like to open the public hearing. Would the applicant like to come forward? Any any comments? Chairman, members of the board, Carla Havens with Mid-Atlantic Resource Consulting. Mike, thank you for a thorough presentation. If you have any other questions, I'll be happy to address them. Any questions? Okay, I think you've answered everything. Then. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else like to speak? At this time, I'll close the public hearing. Any Mr. discussion? For the record, I would think that the, does the neighbor want to have the same comments put into the uh, file? Oh, I a volunteer fireman here. I have to apologize for that. I thought I had um, turned off. I'm sorry. I'll open the public hearing again. Okay, so I'm Carrie Traver, the adjacent property owner, uh, 103, and I am support the revetment project, and I just want in such a way that my tree is intact. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Any, would anyone else like to speak on this issue? Uh, this time I'll close the public hearing. It's, it's always a good idea if you have any concerns or down the road to speak during the public hearing and go on record that you were there and you had commented, not that there would be any lawsuits or anything from this, but... Um, okay, any discussion from the board? I think it's been just pretty well taken care of. My concern, number one, would be the neighbor's tree, and number two would be uh, the stability of the ramp as the, during the construction process. I, I have to, a lot of dependence in the county, so if the county says they can keep an eye on it, then uh, that satisfies me. Okay. Would someone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we uh, grant the exception 
to the resolution. Uh, let me see here. Uh, motion to grant the exception to resolution to grant the uh, exception for the Chesapeake Bay Board case number CBPA 190088 at 105 Shellbank Drive. Okay, so we have a motion to adopt the res resolution to grant the exception. Uh, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Rodley? Yes. Mr. Walter? Is not here, sorry. Mr. Gussman? Yes. Mr. Hughes? Yes. Mr. Afferson? Yes. Okay. Uh, you have your permit or exception. Uh, our next case is CBPA 19-0091 for 3884 Fox Run. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Again, Mike Wilson here to present case CBPA 19-0091, 3884 Fox Run, Mr. Sakti Abanatham. Uh, he has applied uh, for a second driveway access to a recently approved attached garage by this board uh, back in July. Access, one of the conditions of that uh, approval was to get uh, written permission from the JCSA that he could use their access road back to the list station as access to his garage. Uh, that was denied in writing by the JCSA. And that is the reason he is back before the board. Um, subject parcel within Fox Ridge subdivision here, um, just north of Long Hill Station, which is here. Within the Powhatan Creek watershed, Gordon Creek is to the west and Yarmouth Creek is to the north. Aerial photograph of the project site. See the JCSA access road here, the lift stations back here, and then this is Mr. Abanatham's property. There is an existing sanitary sewer line that goes, uh, runs into, or maybe a force main running out of the pump station. I'm not sure which way the, the flow is going. Uh, that's not critical uh, for this discussion. Um, what, the, what I do want to point out uh, is that there would be a, a 20 foot easement surrounding this sanitary line, 10 foot, 10 foot on each side that the service authority would not allow any uh, permanent structure or construction on. <clears throat> During the uh, hearing in June, um, staff realized that we didn't give a, a far enough away view of the project and the, so there is a stormwater BMP down here uh, behind the, the lift station. And then the FEMA floodplain does come up um, and touches the flood, uh, the JCSA lift station uh, in elevation. I wanted to, to point that out to the board that time, this time since, uh, since we missed that the, the last time. Um, topography of the site. Elevation 68 here, 66 here, 64 there, fairly flat, and it drains from the front right of the property to the back left. There is no floodplain on his property. However, uh, Mr. Abanatham is the, uh, his property is fully encumbered by the RPA as it was modified in 2004. From the original site plan application, uh, he had proposed an attached garage here, removing the uh, outdoor attached deck. That was granted June 12, 2019, uh, with the condition uh, that, again, the applicant shall provide written proof that the service authority would allow him to access or use their drive access here for his garage, proposed garage addition here. Again, that was denied by the service authority. What he's currently wanting to do 
is put in a second driveway here, approximately 10 feet by 70 feet in width. Or I'm sorry, 10 feet wide by 70 feet in length, um, parallel to the service authority's drive so he can access the uh, garage that had been approved. Some photographs from the site. The proposed driveway would be in this location. And right here is the service authority access drive. Walking down to access drive, those driveways here, that tree would be removed, the shrub would be removed. Um, and then getting around to uh, the back of the property, the approved garage location here, that's the existing deck that would be removed. And then his proposed driveway would lead into that. Uh, his proposed mitigation areas are here and, and, and here by the back fence. You can see there's a, a barbed wire topped chain link fence that does surround the service authority's lift station. That is the, his rear property line. Uh, again, from the ordinance, uh, the board may grant exceptions to section 23.7 if the application meets the following conditions, that the exception request is the minimum necessary to afford relief, the grant and the exception will not confer upon the applicant any special privileges denied by the chapter uh, to other property owners similarly situated in the vicinity, that the exception request will be in harmony with the purpose and intent of the ordinance and, of not, and not of substantial detriment to water quality, that the exception request is not based upon conditions or circumstances that are self-created or self-imposed, nor does the request arise from conditions or circumstances either permitted or non-conforming that are related to adjacent parcels, and that reasonable and appropriate conditions are imposed which will prevent the um, exception request from causing a degradation to water quality, which leads me to if the board should approve this exception request, uh, the staff does recommend these uh, four conditions, uh, that the applicant obtain any other necessary federal, state, local permits as required and including a VDOT land use permit if it's required. A surety of $1,000 to be paid and in place prior to the commencement of work in a form acceptable to the county attorney's office to ensure the mitigation requirements. Exception request approval shall become null and void within, if construction has not begun within one year from tonight, September 11th, 2020, and then any written request for extension to the exception shall be submitted to our office, the Stormwater and Resource Protection Division, six weeks prior to that expiration date, which is July 31st, 2020. I'd be happy to answer any questions the board may have on this request. First one I have is the uh, driveway going to be um, stone, concrete, grass? I will defer that question to the applicant. Your plan, uh, the plan that you have here shows that the uh, corner of the driveway on the front is going to go over top of the uh, service authority property. Is that right? The service authority drive uh, there is a corner of it here that is actually on Mr. Abernathum's property. Okay. Uh, it was not built entirely on JCSA property. Is there a restriction uh, for building this by the JCS? Can, they, can he put it there without any problems with them? It's on his property. Um, I'll leave it to that. Um, unless the county attorney's office wants to weigh in. <laughs> Mr. Wilson, in your uh, determination on the total encroachment, you referenced the 10 by 70 foot driveway and then the previously authorized garage with it looks like an apron in front of it. Um, but that whole area will be now impervious, correct? Correct. Um, Connecting the ex proposed to 
the existing, the already authorized portion. Um, could you restate that, please? <clears throat> the proposed driveway appears to end before it connects with the oh. apron. So yeah, that here, yeah, that's that's a drafting error. Okay, that's fine. I did notice that at three thirty. What is he going to do for mitigation? Uh, he's proposing to plant ten canopy trees. That's what that was the proposal for the June meeting, and that hasn't changed. Uh, what what did change was for the June meeting. His proposal exceeded county requirements, with the addition of uh, this area in the uh, impervious cover. His pro mitigation proposal now just meets county requirements. Any other questions for the staff? Just clarification: There's no setback issues associated with putting the driveway on the property. Not with line. the driveway. Setback issues only uh, matter for structures. Okay, thank you. At this time, I'd like to open the public hearing. Would the applicant like to come forward? Please state your name for the record. So my name is Sakti Velan Bonantan. I'm the. I would. I would like to answer if you. If you guys might have anything. Any questions for the applicant? I have. Why do you need a driveway to go back here? What's uh, What's going to be going on in the garage that you'll need a driveway for? Are you going to park a car in there? Put that for me, please, sir. Why do you need a driveway? Park that's the, the only car? way that I can get uh, reach to my garage at the back here. Are you going to be parking a car in the garage, sir? Refresh my memory, is that a three-car garage? And, and motorcycle. Uh, Two-car, and then um, I have a couple of motorcycles, too, so. So to enter the garage uh, with your motor vehicle, you'll go down the driveway, uh, the apron, uh, you'll pull onto the apron and then make a left-hand turn into the garage. Sir. Enough room to do that without going onto the uh, adjacent property. Uh, my plan is to go and then back up. So it should be good. Any other questions for the applicant? Thank you. Sure. Anyone else like to speak on this issue? This time I'll close the public hearing. Any discussion from the board? I don't have anything, sir. I think that uh, it's clear that uh, it's self-imposed. So the question is, uh, do we grant it, and what will be the uh, harm if we do grant it? Mr. Chairman, um, a part of, uh, we reviewed similar applications for encroachment for structures um, and gone to some considerable lengths with the applicants to try to do what they can to minimize their encroachment. Um, part of the, the, the in Approval process for the original structure, the access along the JCSA easement gave that access without requiring any additional encroachment. So I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with this because I, I think we're d doubling the encroachment into the RPA um, for this access and concerned. No, we. We approved the garage, and I would have a problem with it if it wasn't a yard. It's already a yard, and it's a driveway right beside it, and the house is adjacent to it. And I can understand exactly where you're coming from. I believe me, I do. But you know, I, uh, I I'm agreeing with what you say, but I can't see uh, any any you know alternative, any solution to it. Yeah. I mean, it would have been nice if the service authority had granted the permission, but they didn't. No. Of course, I would have written them a letter at charging them rent for their road on my property, maybe, uh, after I got that answer. Uh, um, I don't know. I, I sort of feel 
you know, we've given permission to build it. Yeah. It's got to be able to get back to I this garage. I agree what you're saying exactly, entirely. Yeah. Really Just keep in mind that condition, that approval was conditioned upon access via JCSA property. Yeah. I, I would oh, we forgot to get it. We didn't get an answer of what, what this is going to be constructed of. I'd, I'd like to hear that. I'm sorry. If you, I'll reopen the public hearing. If you could answer, what will the, how will the driveway be constructed? The rock. I'm, I'm thinking rock. Maybe later, like concrete. Maybe I'm not sure. Well, can we can we make a condition that it be permeable? Uh -huh. um, I mean, I, I would be more favorable if this is not paved and it, you know, it was. So let's leave it in on on rocks, like not. The board may have a condition as, you know, as they see fit. Um, if they want a permeable paver type, a permeable surface driveway, that's certainly within your purview to require that. Staff would, is hesitant to recommend that to the board due to maintenance, long-term maintenance issues associated with that. Uh, would be more inclined to say it needs to be a gravel surface as opposed to asphalt or concrete. Um, the gravel will compact and become impervious over time as well, but there's, there's the area in between won't necessarily uh, be as impervious. There'll be a little bit of uh, infiltration going on with that. But it, is, is that a, allay any concerns? Does that make it better? <laughs> well, the county considers, if I'm not mistaken, a gravel to be an impervious surface. So it, it, we do if in terms of surface material. It's whether it's gravel or concrete or asphalt. We consider it impervious, one hundred percent. That doesn't bring me. Um, okay. At this time, I'll close the public. Uh, no, you go ahead and close the public hearing, Mr. Chair. But I wanted to address Mr. Roadley's concern about uh, one of the previous conditions. Um, Anticipating that issue might come up, uh, consulted with the county attorney's office today, and we've modified the resolution um, to include a seventh item. Normally they have six. Uh, the seventh item, and I'll, I'll read that into the record. Uh, so this exception request approval shall satisfy the conditions set forth in case number CBPA 19-0032, 3884 Fox Run, number 6B requiring the applicant to, quote, provide written proof in the form of a license or permanent access easement from the James City Service Authority that the applicant may use a portion of 3880 Fox Run to access the proposed garage. I believe that addresses your concern. Well, it, it addresses the legality of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yes, uh -huh. the legality of it, correct. <laughs> Good answer. All right, so with that addition, there's no violation of the previous permit, yeah. but um, I hope um, the highway department goes along with it. <laughs> well, uh, well, hearing's closed now. Um, <coughs> discussion from the board. I think uh, I'm in favor of going of approving this. I will vote for it. All right. Uh, would someone like to make a motion? Did the last one. Uh, Mr. Chair, yeah. one, one point of clarification, please, for staff. Did you want to condition the driveway to be gravel or? No, I'm not, I'm not making that. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that the board vote for approval case CBPA 19-0091-3884 Fox Run secondary driveway. Okay. So we have a motion to adopt the resolution to grant the exception for Chesapeake Bay Board case CBPA 19-0091 at 3884 Fox Run. Everyone clear? Uh, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Roadley? No. Mr. Gussman? Yes. Mr. Hughes? Yes. Mr. Apperson? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, you can build your driveway. Thank you for coming out. Um, 
We have no matters for board consideration, no matters of special privilege. Can we have a motion to adjourn? Yes, sir. So moved.